fact. I want to turn briefly to the last four days of the Platinum Jubilee, uh, Sharon, because aside from Boris Johnson being booed, which may well have been a tipping point for many MPs to press the button on him today with this no confidence, uh. Uh, it was also interesting to me that the Sussexes got booed. Uh, Harry and Meghan, what did you make of that? Well, it wasn't a total boo. It wasn't as it big was, as Boris. No, nowhere near. But very unusual for a member of the royal family to get any booing at that kind of event. Yes. And they did. But it wasn't anywhere near as bad as Boris. You could mm. still hear the cheers above the boos, put it that way. I mean, what do you, should we read much into it? I just got the feeling that they basically discovered on this particular trip that they've gone from A-list royals to C-list. What do you mean by that? And that's how the royal family are now going to treat them. They won't be on the balcony, they won't be at the top events, and they can come and go if they want, but they're no longer going to be no working A-list important royals. No. Come on now, doll. No, they, are, they have lost their importance. They don't mean anything. The country um, wasn't that overjoyed. I didn't hear many people go, this is amazing. I don't think the country here. really cares very they much. They didn't. And, and the thing that I must say is the country didn't react one way or the other. Mm. It was, oh, they're here. OK. But... OK, I'm listening. You have my attention. The way they kind of came in and went mm. was a, a huge signal that I don't think we'll see them here much at and all. And what made me laugh, Isabel, was they, they arrived on a massive private jet from California, these two eco-warriors. Whose was it, Constantly though? preach... Well, well, it'll be... I mean, they've it'll, used... It'll come out. They've used it Elton's was. a lot, they've used the Clooney's a lot, who knows, somebody, right? But it's the utter hypocrisy, once again, preaching about carbon footprint, always using private Same jets. Same every time. Same... Yeah. Here we go again. And it, funny enough, it's the common link between all the people who got booed was hypocrisy. The British public will forgive a lot of things, but they won't forgive brazen hypocrisy. Yeah, right. To be fair on them, they did actually keep a relatively low profile, they didn't themselves. they? they and, did. you know, you said they discovered their C-list. I mean, they asked to be taken off the list. You know, they mm. wanted to be out of the working circulation. Oh. So, I, look, I think it could have gone worse. You know, I don't think they overshadowed it. No, they didn't. No, no no, of course, they didn't. No. people took pictures of them, but they did behave quite well. OK. There, there wanna, was no impact. I want to play... no impact. I just want to play a clip, first of all, of the... This is the Queen on the last... The closing moments of the Platinum Jubilee on Sunday. Because we weren't sure if she'd even make it. She was there at the start. I was by the palace when, they, when she came out on the Thursday. It was an amazing moment. And then she just sort of vanished from sight. And we thought that maybe we wouldn't see her again. And then you suddenly saw the flag moving on the palace roof and you realised, fantastic. And then you thought, go on, out you come. That doesn't make sense. And out came the star of the show, the star of any show she's ever at. And she came out and I just thought, if we can listen to a bit of the sound here. I just thought this was so moving. Uh. It gives you goosebumps. It really does. <laughs> that was a scene, and then, of course, the crowd had burst into God Save the Queen, which was incredibly evocative and emotional, I felt. Fact. Um, Isabel, I mean, it's hard to overstate the importance of this queen to this country or the impact that we're going to have when she's no longer here. Couldn't agree more. I mean, I found... I'm not a massive monarchist, but I found the whole thing weirdly moving. Uh. And... And it is because it sort of feels like it's a bit of a goodbye. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit more kid. Well, it's the last jubilee that we'd be able to have for in, her. In reality, yeah. she is not well. We know that. Yeah. And, you know, when the palace says she's experiencing some discomfort, we know that really means she's in a very great deal of pain. Mm. Are you sure about that? And I think when she does sadly pass, there is going to be a huge amount of national soul searching. Yeah, I agree. You know, she has held everything together. Yes. Real concerns about the future of the Union and the Commonwealth. I totally agree. Grace, I know you're not a massive monarchist. In fact, you spent most of the weekend, oh, yeah. according to your Instagram feed, at a wild <laughs> festival where you were painting your fingernails fluorescent green. What do you mean by that? You're not um, a fan, then. Which I thought was a tribute to what the Queen wore, actually, on the Sunday night. Yes, but yeah, clear, I was clearly I misjudged of time you. And um, but even as somebody who's not that into the monarchy, can you appreciate what this woman has done for the country? 
I have basically no opinions about them as people. I don't really follow, mm. you know, the ins and outs of the monarchy. I don't think I should have to follow what goes on within this family, no. this dynasty that kind of rules our country from behind the scenes. What? What I do think, though, is that when the Queen does sadly die, we will enter into a national conversation about whether or not this is an institution that we should have as part of our, you know, constitution, mm -hmm. as part of the way that our country works. It is very strange that we have a family whose, you know, uh, marriages, weddings, births, dramas, we're all constantly invested in understanding as though they're the kind of Kardashians or something. Right. Uh. That they're in charge of our politics, of our government, ultimately, this is our head of state. I think that when the Queen, who everyone, you know, loves and who's been in charge for a very long time, uh, does go, when we have this array of pretty uninspiring potential successes, people are going to start thinking, You're is missing. this what we really want? Right. You are missing, in my view, the rising superstar of the royal family, and it's this little guy. He is. Louis. He's amazing. Who, whose facial expressions over the four days got increasingly hilarious. <laughs> and who clearly began to seize his moment. And, in fact, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge issued a statement tonight on Twitter thanking everybody and saying that we all had a fantastic time, especially Louis. <laughs> just... That doesn't make sense. Don't, don't you think, though, that it, it gave people confidence that this is the family that yes. will be here yeah. after the Queen yeah. is no and longer stream, here? And, by the way, very deliberately, that last scene on the last night, and everyone was singing God Save the Queen, but she had chosen for that... Are you sure about that? ...sort of iconic moment of the end that of the Jubilee... That last picture. ...that this was the family yeah. she... That this yeah. is now the streamlined royals. That's the way it's going to be. These yeah. are the two next monarchs, yeah. potentially three next monarchs, and that's the way it but will be. But Charles has said for a long time that he's going to cut down the yeah. people who yeah. are actually on payroll and that represent the family. Yeah. It's... What? It's going to be cold. And the thing is, I, I think that the royal family brings so much to this country. Fact. Mm. I mean, you look at all the people from all well, the over tourists. the world. I mean, I think they, the tourism. They don't, actually, they don't actually cost us anything. The merchandise the great myth that is was they sold. Cost us money. I think if, if we were going to make a kind of coherent economic argument as to how we construct our head of state, we could probably make a better one for saying, I don't know, have a presidential system or have what, some got our own of... version of Joe Biden. Nice. Well, I mean, no, it wouldn't be. <laughs> it just, wouldn't be the same as that. You would have I'm a, just putting a, it out a head there. of I think state. I, I think I'd he would just be responsible yeah. for kind I think of. I'd rather have the queen. Uh, of trashing coming on Thursday, then the book, then a series of interviews around the book. This is just a never-ending stream of attacks on their own family. I appreciate that's how you feel, but ultimately what they're really doing is highlighting the disgusting elephant in the room that the majority of this nation are more than happy to ignore, and that's what's happening right now. Is y'all right upstairs? And they're trying to do it in a way that allows them to look after their family, basically. So if it means making money whilst they do it, then so... Well, what is that elephant in the room? Good question. Racism. Racism in terms of racial prejudice within institution and racism in terms of this country being racist. But I said to you the other day, when things got a bit heated yeah. uh, at this desk, that I felt that if you're going to make incredibly serious charges of racism in an institution like the British royal family and the monarchy, you've got to provide some evidence. Fact. They've now had a year and a half or more since the Oprah Winfrey interview in which they made all these incendiary claims. And they've not produced any evidence of any racism. OK, so what I'm hoping is that these next set of documentaries, they will actually provide us with some names so we can kind of stop discussing what if it doesn't? and going... If it doesn't, well, what I'll do is I'll provide you with my evidence. Is that all right? If you give me a minute, I'll give you some evidence as to why this, that specific institution is racist, which I can do. Shut up, shut up, bro, shut up, bro. So, in terms of the evidence that you are likely to find, it is going to be in the form of covert racism. And I know you don't like that word, but it, it is a fact. So, examples include, in terms of the institution, the distribution of the Order of St. Michael, which is a badge which ultimately depicts a white man with wings trampling a black man. Here we go again. We can also delve into the fact that uh, that institution hung up pictures of a little black slave boy on the walls within the institution and everyone was so blinded by their racial prejudice that no one saw fit to take it down when the black president popped round for tea. <laughs> or we 
can delve into the fact that the Queen Elizabeth, or rather the late Queen, made sure that she did not have to adhere to the equalities laws and legislation, which is arguably what a true racist would do. And we cannot take away the fact, you're negate calling, the fact. You're calling the Hold late Queen a true racist? No, I'm saying it's arguably what a true racist would do. <laughs> <laughs> She Make wasn't sure. a racist. She was the head of the second. Commonwealth. Hold she couldn't have been a less racist person okay. if she had tried. Okay. Ask Here's. anyone in any of the Commonwealth countries Here's. about the Queen. None of them ever felt the Queen was a racist. Uh, that doesn't make sense. And and as Thomas Markle has said, she's quite clear she never wanted him at the wedding at all. He's never received an invitation. She told him it was lost in the post. I mean, excuse me, clearly he was set up from word go. Why? Because he was trying to rescue his reputation. I was told by people at the palace that the late Queen offered not only for Harry and Meghan, her father and her mother. <gasps> they accepted on behalf of the mother, they refused it on behalf of the father. And everything that I have seen happen, and my understanding of Thomas Markle, which will be far more limited than Megan's. She <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. She understood it. She slammed his buttons hard enough. He'd, he'd, if not croak, he'd certainly make sh be so, so destroyed by it all that he wouldn't come to the wedding, which is precisely what happened. And as he what said to her. And to Harry, well, aren't you sorry I'm not dead? Because and and that I think was really the objective of the exercise. Yeah. I think he, he he alighted upon the object the object of the exercise. Are you serious? Because Meghan doesn't want her father around. She doesn't want Harry to know her father, because she doesn't want Harry to ever hear from her father the truth about her. But Harry is. Fact now seeing the truth about her and told that that things are not honky dory harry that the scales have been falling off harry's eyes thank god at least he you serious can save himself and hopefully the two children his children his children he can hopefully save from from really what is a fate worse than death because really to live with somebody like Meghan is is really an awful, awful fate. I know what I'm speaking about. I've lived with a Meghan. And, you know, it's it's really, it's like having... Wait for it. ...an egg beater in your brain. 